welcome back to another episode of The Biggest Transformation. Today, we are about to hop on live with the cast, do our weigh-in, see how they did this week, where they stacked up. And this week, we're going to actually be tackling something that, you know, part of us end up where we're at because of secret eating, emotional eating, all those things that have kept us stuck. And so this week, we're going to actually be tackling some of that on the call with the cast so that they cannot just cover it up, so that they cannot get past it for these 12 weeks, but so they can move past it permanently. So let's go ahead and hop on with the cast, see how they're doing, get their weigh-ins done, see how the red team and the blue team did, who's in the lead, who is not, and uh, Good morning. So we are going to get our weigh-ins done and we are going to find out if I am wearing red or blue today for our meeting. So we're going to see if the blue team or the red team who brought it the most. And um, I feel like these are pom-poms. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get our weigh-ins done out of the way. See how y'all did. All right, Jen Short, I'm coming to you. Hold on. 172.2. 172.2. Awesome job. Hey, if you can't celebrate yourself, who can? Hey, Danielle. Hey. point eight. Cindy, yep. Yep, I'm coming. Two seven zero point six. Missy, you're up, girlfriend. Two fifteen point five. Yeah. All right, Laura. Two twenty-seven point eight. Okay, Mary Star. Two twenty-seven point eight. Two sixty-four point nine. One. Yeah. Five point four oh. And Matthew. Yeah, see now it gives me two seventy four. I I don't know. I'm losing my mind, but I have the standing the leaderboard. Yay! 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 <laughs> All right. So before we get to red and blue and all that jazz, let's go ahead and do the season two leaderboard for the week. In first place with a total of 21 pounds lost, 9.27%, Debbie! Woo! Debbie! Debbie! Debbie, first place! You like slayed the Matthew. No. Oh, Matthew. Oh. <laughs> Go, Debbie. I feel like I need a party hat. <laughs> well done. Oh. New first place leader. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. In second place, still, you, you moved to second. 28 pounds lost, 9.2%, 9.20. So she slayed you by like a seventh of a percent. Um, Matthew, second place. Good job. Right, Matthew. Good job. Second is the first loser, but awesome job. <laughs> good job. Like truly from the bottom of my heart. I really do. A good job. <laughs> All right. Third place. 13.6 pounds lost. 6.78%. Mary Star, third place. Ooh, Mary. Girl. Congratulations, Mary. Hold down that oh, third Mary. place spot. In fourth place, 
with a total of 13.7 pounds, 4.69%. Miss Danielle, Danielle. Danielle. Fifth That's place so with a total of 15.4 pounds, 4.6%. Laura. Yay, Laura. Good job. Man, a bunch of you guys hanging out right in the same, like same percentage wise. No, Danielle kicks me out of my spot. I'm coming back. <laughs> In sixth place, with a total of 10.4 pounds, 4.22%, Miss Jen Short moving up to sixth place. Woo! Good job, All right, Jen. Jen. That's how they dropped it. In seventh place, with a total of 20.5 pounds lost, 4.14%, Miss Cindy. Yay! Yay. Yay. And in eighth place, with a total of 15 pounds, 3.62%, Missy, good job. Good job, All right, Missy. As a group, you guys lost a total of 18.3 pounds last week. In total, since we started in the last, what, four weeks, 130.2 pounds. Wow. 30.2 pounds. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. Awesome job. Okay, Peggy wants to say something now. I, I, I want to drink all my water. Go, go red, go team. No, red. no. She's sabotaging us. She's trying to hijack this. Get out of here, you go eyebrow thing. Red. No, no, no. There are no team reds. Welcome on this team. I love you, girl, but there ain't no team reds. Welcome on this team. You be careful that she's not hearing and reporting back to Team Red, right? Um, do you guys have a contract signed where she's not allowed to say anything and you're not allowed to say anything? I certainly do hope so. Um, which, by the way, I, I love the brows on you, Peggy. It gives you a whole new look, girl. Um, yeah, I like it. All right, guys, this is my serious mode. <laughs> <laughs> so this means i'm ready for action i'm oh I'm, and i'm i'm angry look at that i agree with denise andy i think you should have a pepsi give me that yeah, somehow she mysteriously lost her water bottle, wanted me to find it. I'm like, I don't think so. I got eyebrows to grow. Sorting with the enemy. Also Indeed. consorting with the enemy. That's sort of like Inception, like, ah, betraying each other's trust. Oh no, oh no. My wife is like, so Shane's on the other team, right? I'm like, yeah, she's like, you should hide his water bottle when he gets in here. Oh. <sighs> I love that woman so much. Shane is in the bathroom. I feel like a bad person. I probably won't hide it all night because that just seems unkind. But, you know, for a little while. Oh, I didn't go seek. That's a good spot. That's kind of fun. So it's in the drawer. All right, I'm going to go switch the laundry while he's doing that. I'm going to take my water bottle with me. I'm not that dumb. Hey guys, guys, this is the moment. You lost hey buddy, what's up? It's my water bottle. That's 24.6%. Did you misplace your water bottle during a contest? Where's my water bottle, Matthew? <laughs> Whatever could you mean? Maybe it's under the table. I don't know. Crazy, huh? The red team through week one. Hold on. Uh, the red team. Woo, 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 woo. The red team through week one. She's got red and blue on. Bring it. Oh, hey. oh it's red and gray. <laughs> oh. red team. Sorry, blue team. I would not be wearing blue. Y'all did not slay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So the red, so the red team, team 13.4 pounds. The blue team, 9.4. Even me is representing. 
What was that? I had my dog, she's got a red collar on. I was like, even me is representing. <laughs> and that's counting, that's counting, you know, Karen twice, so you're not short a person. I don't want y'all to use that as an excuse later, thinking, well, we were short a person. No, you ain't. No, no you I, I heard you. What did you say the red team was? I, I missed the beginning of that. 18.6. Awesome. Eight. No, the red team, 14.4. 14.4. Yep, with the loss and the advantage, and then the blue team with the loss and the advantage, and yeah. So there we have it. Through week one, the red team has a pretty commanding lead, like a 50% lead. Yay. Blue team's I will say to stop, you know, you know, poking the blue team. Y'all did kill the water challenge. Y'all. Yeah, you did. Y'all yeah, killed did. Y'all, y'all made me think I can't do this challenge no more. <laughs> I can't. So let's let's talk about emotional eating, okay? So emotional eating is how we've learned to cope. It's how we've learned to make ourselves feel better through food, okay? And for most of us, if we look back, if we look back at our past, we can typically find if we're looking where that started. And for most of us, it started with our parents. It started with our teachers. It started with our coaches. It started with all those things. Because as parents, and a lot of us now do this with our kids, which is awesome because we are, we, we have been created as emotional eater and now we create emotional eaters. So let's, let's, let's take a look at how this is created in the first place. How many of you were as a child were ever rewarded with food? Anybody ever rewarded with food? Oh, you did good at your baseball game. I love that Peggy and Andy are driving and they're like, oh, we still need to participate. <laughs> How many of you were told something like, oh, you won your baseball game. Let's go get ice cream. It's the last day of school. Let's have a pizza party. Uh, it's, oh, you had, we've all been rewarded with food. Food has been made a reward for a lot of us. Okay. And so we have these happy feelings of emotion and now those happy feelings of emotion are married to food to celebrate. So we've learned, we've created emotional attachment that when something good happens, we have to celebrate with food, okay? So there's the emotional connection for celebrating. We all, we all feel like if we, I mean, and think about it, guys, when something good happens today in your life, what's one of the first things you want to do? Go out to eat, have ice cream, have a snack. Even if you've been working, think about it. Think about the thoughts of, I've been working hard. I deserve a brownie. I deserve this extra teaspoon of peanut butter. I deserve a drive through through, you know, the Taco Bell drive through I deserve, because those were created. And listen, most of our parents, most of our teachers, most of our coaches, had no idea that they were creating this emotional attachment, but it's what's happened. Then there's this. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take a little walk down memory lane and look at some of the emotions. Anybody grew up with a parent who said you're gonna finish everything on your plate and you're not leaving until everything on your plate's gone? Anybody had? I did. I did. I used to hide food in a napkin under my armpit. <laughs> throw it out for the dogs to eat. I would like shove it off my plate in a napkin and then wad it up and put it under my armpit. One time I was wearing a white shirt and it was spaghetti. And like an hour later, I had like a little spaghetti mark on my white shirt. And my mom's like, what is on? Why do you have red underneath there? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'm bleeding. That's what <laughs> spaghetti sauce. Anyway. So like my husband to this day, still has an issue with wanting to finish all of his food and even my food and my kids' food. If we have food on our plate and whether I've made it or he's paid for it, it's finish your food. You're not leaving until you finish your food. Anybody hear this one? If you don't eat all your dinner, you're not getting a snack. 
Mm -hmm. Anybody hear this one? <laughs> Some of you guys have heard all of these. <laughs> so we have, so now we have punishment. If you don't eat all your dinner, you're not getting a snack. If you do good, you get a reward with food. Did anybody ever have a bad day? And somebody in your parent, teacher, spouse, parent, whoever it was, they then console you with food. You had a bad day, so let's go get ice cream. You had a bad day, so let's make your favorite whatever. Oh, you had a bad day. How many of you watched your parents? I just had a bad day. We're getting pizza tonight. I don't have time to cook. So you think about it. Think about where all these seeds were planted. Think about where all these habits were created. So for most of us, we didn't create this attachment to food. It was created for us. So first off, we have to get control of the thoughts. We have to, you cannot control what you don't know is there. You cannot change what you don't know you need to change. So first and foremost, it's recognizing what are your triggers? We all have triggers when it comes to emotional eating. For some of us, it's a setback. For some of us, it's stress. For some of us, it's physical pain. For some of us, it's emotional pain. For me, I did not realize until, gosh, I had all lost the weight and I, I was a mom. We had all these babies and my husband was traveling without me. So for me, one of mine, I didn't even know was loneliness. When my husband would be gone and I'm home, I would want to go eat. Like he's gone. Yes. I don't have to cook. I can go through the drive through And like these were, so I never would have said one of mine was being alone was one of my triggers. Maybe, maybe it was no, was no, maybe it was also no accountability because he wasn't home to see that I was eating like crap. Um, lack of sleep, whatever, whatever they are, we all have triggers. And a lot of times it's what we've witnessed. It's what we've watched. So what are your triggers? Where do you get yourself in trouble? Maybe it's being, maybe it is, again, this would fall into emotional but maybe it's not getting a result you wanted. Maybe it's Wednesday and the scales popped up and maybe it's justification for some of us. Well, this isn't going right. So I might as well just have the da 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 da. Maybe it's FOMO, fear of missing out for some of us. We all, maybe it's social pressure. Mine, one of mine was social pressure. That used to be a big one of mine. So it's recognizing what are your triggers? Because if you don't know your triggers, they will continue to trigger you. Once you know your triggers, they show their hands. And what we eat in, and what we eat in secret shows up in public. And I don't have to ask who's ever struggled with secret eating because it's probably most of us. And secret eating can be eating something and shoving the wrapper in the bottom of the trash can. Mm -hmm. something when Eating something when no one's around that we wouldn't eat in front of them. Taking a lick of the peanut butter and when someone walks in the room, we stop chewing so they don't know we just did it. Now yeah. I'm gonna tell you, if you're doing that inside of here and you're still being secret about it, that habit's not going to go away on its own. It's not going to go away until you shine light on it. So if you're still in this group playing pretend and you're doing 99% not good, but there's still one part of you that is secret eating, hear me. <laughs> you th if you're still doing it in here, what do you think is going to happen when this is over? If you do not break that habit, if you do not, if you do not smash that sucker down, if you're eating like crap, see, some of you guys have to admit it sometimes, especially if you gain weight. But it shouldn't be on a Sunday that you're admitting it. We should know inside of the group when it happens. Because if we don't know inside of the group when it happens, you know what keeps happening? You keep doing it. If you come in the group and you admit that you just ate something bad, that kind of holds your butt accountable. You're, you're typically not going to keep doing it. 
But if you don't come in the group, guess what's going to continue to happen? You're going to probably keep letting yourself slide and keep doing it. So I, listen, I just have something in my spirit. This is we're supposed to talk about this today. I know some of y'all are still dealing with the secret eating crap. And I know some of y'all have put some things in your mouth that you weren't supposed to, and you're not being honest with us about it. And it's not, it's not that you're in trouble. It's that I don't want this thing to continue to plague you. I don't want this thing to continue to be your Achilles heel. I want you to get over and get past this. And anything you hide, any seed you bury in the ground will sprout. And I know it's hard, but you need to make a declaration that I'm not going to hide anymore, period. Inside of this group, everything has got to be. And for some of you, I know you've already done that. For in season one, especially, I know some of you have really, really already done that. And I'm so proud of you. And I know that there's freedom that comes with that. But I know there's a couple of you that haven't. In season two, I know there's a couple of you that haven't. I don't need to know because you've told me. I just know in my knower that you haven't. I know in my knower that some of y'all have been having some licks and bites and haven't been honest about it. I just know it. And so this isn't, and if you feel that thing in your stomach right now and you're like, oh crap, crap. And you're feeling that shame and guilt. No, you tell that shame and guilt to go to hell. It has no place here. This is about you getting freedom and you getting past this. And it's the shame and guilt that has kept you stuck. We are grown men and grown women. We don't need to feel ashamed or guilty, but it's just about looking, it's data, data. This is what's keeping me stuck. It's about taking, removing the emotion. And that's the hard part about weight loss. We're literally, we're trying to be logical about an emotional thing. We're trying to be logical about this emotional, being overweight is all emotional. Nothing, there's nothing logical about being overweight. There's nothing logical about overeating. It's all emotional. But if we don't find a way to be logical, to bring some logic, and we just keep running on emotion, well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Logic says, yes, get free. Be honest. Stop hiding. Stop being ashamed. Stop using food as a weapon against yourself. Stop using food as a medication that doesn't work anyway. It's like you taking a pill for a headache and the pills don't work. (laughs) The headache's still there. And in some cases it makes it worse. That would be silly, right? You would not take medicine for a headache that didn't work, but yet we use food as a medicine and it doesn't work. It never makes us feel better. It only adds to our health problems. It only adds to our lack of self-confidence. It only adds to our lack of self-worth. Because what we choose to admit to, what we choose to be honest with, no longer has power over us. It no longer has power over us. When we hide it, it has power over us. What we hide always controls us, unfortunately. And we hide it thinking we're gonna get freedom. And now now when we hide it, we have the shame of that we did X, And then now there's the shame of hiding X. So it's like the double whammy of shame. The double whammy of, I feel bad. The double whammy of, oh crap, I screwed up again. Which just confirms the belief that we're a screw up and we can't do it. So anyway, I could keep going for hours on this topic. We're not going to, but um, give me, you know what? I'm I'm just going to, totally scrap our question. And I want to go with this question. So we're going to go in the same order. And during your time, this is your time to confess anything that you have hidden. This was not my original plan, but this is what's in my spirit. And this is what we're going to do. So Yeah. So there we go.
sometimes I'm in control and sometimes I just follow what's inside and we're just going to go with that. We're going to scrap my plan because his plan is better than my plan. So, and listen, if you have truly come clean with this, this, this is your chance to get freedom. That's all I'm going to say. You just heard me talk about where hiding keeps you. Okay. Be smart, make a wise decision, make a decision that's going to get you to where you want to go. Not one that's going to continue to keep you stuck. This is a safe place. You, I, I was the queen of hiding. Okay. And it takes a hider to see a hider. It takes a deceiver to see a deceiver. So this is a safe place. This is, I understand. Been there, done that. Hid things from the person closest to me on the planet. My husband, he had no idea. No idea. I, yeah, anyway. So we're going to start with you season two. Um, and Jen, you're going to go first. Let me get over to you. And I know some of you guys right now, your stomach's going lean into it. Welcome it. Don't freaking let that sucker inside of you be like, oh, you can't, you can't tell them about what you've been licking or eating or whatever. If, if you have been, okay, I'm going to stop. You know what you need to do. I don't need to mother you. Okay. Hi, Jen. Hi. Um, so I, Friday night, totally ate extra blue and orange and justified it because it was still on the healthy list. Like it's still on my approved list of food I get to eat. Um, but that's strangely, it was this week where I was seeing the most growth. Uh, I struggled the most with blues and orange. I put my cheese on my salad. I'm like, I know this will totally satisfy me, but Carmen, why? I just, what do you mean you don't even eat cheese sometimes? Like, how do you not have cheese? Like, how do you not want more? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I, when I made my husband's salad for the next day, I chopped his up and then all of a sudden I was snacking on his salad and then I had to remeasure his because I had eaten, I had eaten part of his blue container of cheese so uh I've been doing salad so I'll take my orange container and I'll fill it halfway with orange and there's just been several times where I've um eaten some of the seeds and then remeasured and then put the salad dressing on top to to equal it to a full orange so that's that's been my my hiding and when does that stop? Today. And yeah, I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna not talk, let you guys get through this and then I'll talk more. I feel like I've already talked a lot. Okay, thank you for being honest, Jen. You're welcome. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Um, honestly, I like this has been the most disciplined I've ever been. Um, I, I can't think, I have tons of stories from before, but um, I am such a competitive person with myself that when you gave us that calendar of like, we have to start at day one, and we cheat, like that has been the most motivating thing for me not to cheat. So awesome. So no, listen, you don't need to feel bad. And like I said in the very beginning, some of y'all have been dealing with this and that's great. But um, so how many days are you strong without a cheat, without an unplanned thing in your mouth? Since the first weigh-in of prep week. Nice. Wait. That is amazing. I am so proud of you. Good job. Okay, Miss Cindy. <clears throat> um. I I don't ever feel like I cheat, but I but I do know, but I well like okay I cheat. Um, I when I make salads, I like olives in my salads, 
So I eat olives and salad dressings. So I'm actually having two yellow, uh, two oranges as opposed to just one. Um, and you know what, when you put those little tiny olives in your salad, you don't think about how that can sabotage you, but um, it's that, that portion control with everything put together. Yes, I, even though we had that water challenge, I still struggle to get all my water in. Um, I get real close, but a lot of days I just don't get it in. So I think, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to eat in secret at all. I mean, that's awesome. I, you know, it's, it's just, I do, I'm doing some of the wrong things. That's awesome. Yeah. And listen, guys, it really is about a mindset and a habit. It's really not about, it's really not about those 10, two extra olives or five extra pieces of cheese. It's the habit of doing it. It's the habit of the extra. And we all get too fluffy by the habit of extra, the habit of justification, the habit of living in the gray zone. And it's about breaking, you know, some people are like, oh, isn't that being obsessive? Yeah, kind of. Just like being good at anything is obsessive. Like I will forever and always be obsessed with being a good mom, obsessed with being a good wife, obsessed with why? Because obsessed is a word that un obsessed, uncommitted people use to describe committed people. So yes, obsessed means I will not accept failure as an option, but it is a mindset. It's a habit. And so it's really bigger than those extra olives. It's the getting past the, it's developing the discipline muscle to have what is planned and to not have what is not. And creating that habit. And it's so important for many of us that come from fluffy land to do because we don't have it. We get to fluffy land by not, by always having extra. <laughs> um, so for the most part, I've been like staying on the nutrition as long as I'm militant, I do well. Um, where I've, I've definitely, I think flirted with gray at least is so if, if I'm like making a kid's sandwich or something, I can sit on my finger, put it in my mouth. I, I update my number. I have my little try. I have this, I went and grabbed, this is on my wall. So I have to see it like every day while I work nice. out. Um, and it's got, I just have a little dry erase marker. And that's why the shine is because it's glass. And then this like, you know, you can wipe off. But like, so I've been good about updating it. So it's honest and it's in my face every day. But I certainly didn't go into the group 11 days ago and say, dang it. I did it again. Shoot, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I've, I've kind of been, well, they know that's something I've struggled with. I don't, I don't have to say anything today. Um, but that definitely kind of opens that door, I think. And okay. then um, yesterday, so I had, <clears throat> I had planned, uh, because I'd lost over you know five pounds over the previous week, I had planned a, a, a reward day or a cheat day. And um, but I definitely think my, and, and uh, through the week, the scale just didn't like move at all. I mean, it went up once and then it corrected for that, but it was just very flat all week. And I was, um, and so, I, so I, I was like, well, okay, reasonable portion, reasonable person. Um, and I definitely had a reasonable portion, you know, if it was for like myself and one of my kids, uh, it wasn't just like, yeah. So I, I, I think, I mean, I didn't eat, insanely but I definitely ate more than I think I know I should Mary Star I'm coming over to you hey beautiful so last week when we had the gray zone uh talk I recognized some things that I was doing with my like little peanut butter or butter, I, I would be like, oh, this is a teaspoon, this is a teaspoon, but I actually put it on the scale, figured it out, <laughs> and those scales kind of weird, but I, that was good. But last week I had these amazing breakfasts that I was making with these 
tortillas and the tortilla was only 45 calories, but it very specifically says a six inch whole wheat tortilla. And I would look at this and I'm like, yeah, it's probably over six inches, whatever, whatever. I got convicted halfway through the week and I measured it and I took scissors. And I got it. So I got convicted on that. Um, and then this week, I was really hungry at usually at night or mid afternoon sticking to my food and those beach bars, I would just get a beach bar and be like, Oh, it's only half a protein extra. And I would put it in my little tracker, but every, I know there's at least three days that I would always be over a half a carb over a half a thing and pro and it's a teaspoon of oil but I would justify and say, well, if I was eating in the B, then I would be, I would be on track, you know, I, that this would be okay. But I know that's kind of secret eating because those bars are chocolate, right? And me and chocolate, you know, we've got a thing. Laura? So um, I just want to, uh, first of all, ask for um, everybody's forgiveness for not being 100% honest with you guys. Um, this, this past week has, I think, probably been a really a bigger struggle for me uh, for, for different reasons. Um, there's been a couple of days where I've gone over on my on my um, blues and orange. Um, and, you know, when Carmen, when you first started talking about the reason like emotional eating or emotional things of how you what it's like one emotion triggers another one and triggers another one and triggers another one. It's like, and in your head, you're justifying everything you're doing. And in reality, it, it, it's just wrong. Um, you know, me measuring out an orange container for my dressing instead of eyeballing it. Me, you know, not going in the cabinet, which I did do once and get that extra teaspoon of peanut butter. And, but then I didn't like finish it. So I was like, oh, okay. So again, I, I did it, but I didn't do it. So again, it's just that little justification of not, um, not being a hundred percent honest. Um, I was so excited about throwing away the Milky Way that it didn't even dawn on me that I just screwed up by eating a little bit more peanut butter. And, um, you know, I think I, <laughs> you're right. Everything has to, when you shed light on it, it loses its power. And, um, so yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I will, uh, yeah, going to do better, that will be better and be more transparent than, than I have been with, um, with the little things here and there. And, um, yeah, so that was, that's where I'm at. That's awesome. And, you know, I want to challenge you guys to even take out the, well, yes, I went over in my blue and my orange to, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going over. To, Cause see, when we say, yeah, I just went over in my blue or I just went over in my orange. That's a, that's justification mm -hmm. versus just owning the fact of, and this is, I, I don't care if it's a lick. Yep. I uh, was not on plan today. Not well, it was just a little lick, but no, I went over. No, I da 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 owning that. Because again, we are masters. All of us are masters at justification. That's how we get to unhealthy, mm -hmm. how we get extra fluff on our butt is being masters at justification. So I want to challenge you guys. Don't, don't, it doesn't, you just own it. Just own it. You don't have to necessarily specifically name a, well, yes, I just went over, but it was just here. It was just in my orange container. It was just in my blue container. No, I went over. We don't need to justify it. We don't like justification is also a habit. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Defending, trying to lessen the blow. Like, you know, 
yeah, I lied, but just a little bit. No, a lie is a lie is a lie. Dishonesty is dishonesty is dishonesty. Period. Right. Right. So, well, like, I, I just went over. That's all I did. I just went over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, there's over and there's what I did. Okay. I, I no more. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, like think about it. Like, yeah, I mean, I, but you know, I, you, you're like, you can watch it in your kids. They are like, our kids do it all the time. Anyway, we, it's trying to get ourselves out of trouble, but then that just goes into adulthood. So, and again, that's a freedom. There's a freedom that actually comes with just owning it. Debbie, come into you real quick. Debbie. Hello. Um, I'd say that my biggest question is after weigh-in, I tend to go over on my points, my measurements, my eating. Um, I think when I say, when, you, when I think, oh, I get a cheat, I go overboard. Then I come right back, but I still go overboard. And this little this little list here that Cynthia and I were going over on our way here. Um, yeah, I found that I was doing some things wrong. Um, I saw things on here that weren't there, uh, like her, her rice cakes, you know, minus <laughs> sunflower seeds. And um, so, but my biggest thing is after weighing in, I go grab some type of a cheat, whether I deserve it or not. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And that would make perfect sense. It's the perfect time to do it, right? <laughs> For sure. I got three more days to get on. Bang. Right, our weigh-in's done. Yay, I can have an extra m and I can have an yeah. extra spoon, I can have a whatever. But the, Hey, listen, you know, what's beautiful about that. You know what you just discovered, Debbie, that card showed its hands for you mm -hmm. that as soon as you're not accountable and you have this many days to make it up, that, that that's one of your areas that you go and get off plan. And so it's great that that card showed its hand for you. You're probably the person too, that, you know, you have an event coming up. Like, you know, you have a wedding in two weeks and mm -hmm. you want to lose weight, but it's not to like the last five days before the event that you get. <laughs> yes. Did you get in my closet and read my letters? <laughs> so as we come into this next week, stay strong. We're coming into week five. Stay strong. Do the homework. Continue to choose commitment. Commitment is a choice you will make every day, several times a day. It's just like bathing. It's just like brushing your teeth. It's not a once and done kind of thing. You are gonna have to continue to choose to stay committed to your health for the rest of your life. And when you stop making that choice every day, when you start expecting that choice just to happen because you've done it before is when it stops happening. Being committed is a intention. It is a declaration. It is a commitment. It is a thing that you do every day and several times a day. I'm gonna, it, it is it is Wednesday. I'm gonna choose to be committed today. It's Wednesday morning. I'm choosing commitment at work. It's Wednesday at lunch. I'm choosing to be committed. It's Wednesday night, youth group. I'm choosing to be committed. So it's not a once and done. It's a every day, sometimes several times a day. Mm -hmm. Or you choose it, the more it chooses you. The more you choose it, the stronger that muscle gets and the more freedom and the closer you get to your results. And so I believe in you, you're amazing. You were knitted with everything inside of you to be the most committed person you know. 130.2 pounds the cast has lost since we started. And what's more important is the fact that they have lost old habits. They have lost old mindsets. They are overcoming things that literally they have, some of them have been overcome by for years and decades. To watch them be able to overcome self-sabotage, emotional eating, to watch them be able to go to parties and make choices that actually align with their goals and feel good and confident about it. Make no mistake that 
what these what these eight people are doing is so much bigger than just these 12 weeks. The habits they're creating, the decisions they're making, the obstacles they're overcoming is sending their life in a completely different direction. That in one year from today, they're gonna be able to look in the mirror and not even recognize who they have become in the best possible way. So if you haven't, make sure to smash that like button, show the cast some love, share this week's episode. If you've missed any of the, if you've missed any of the previous episodes, I will link in the description box, the playlist for the entire season, as well as season one, because these people are inspirations. They're overcomers, they are brave, and their stories are inspiring. They inspire me, and I know that they inspire you. So thank you so much for watching. We will be back next Wednesday with another episode of The Biggest Transformation. So we'll see you then.